Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Elliot and in this physics help room video, we're going to talk all about blocks on inclined ramps. Now I know this isn't the most exciting system in the world. So why does seemingly every physics teacher in every intro physics class make their students study it? Well, the fact is that it's a great example for learning to apply Newton's laws to a system that's not too complicated, but also not totally trivial. So let's get into it. The setup is that we've got a block of mass M, which we've set down on a ramp that's inclined up at an angle theta. And let's say that the ramp is of length L. Say we release the block from rest from the top of the ramp at t equals zero. Then the question is, when is the block gonna hit the ground? In Newtonian mechanics, we follow a three-step procedure to try to answer these kinds of questions. Step one is to draw the free body diagram. This is just a picture that shows all of the forces that are acting on the mass. In step two, we add up all of those forces and write F equals MA. Finally, in step three, we solve F equals MA to determine the position as a function of time. So now let's apply that procedure to our block. Step one, we want to know all the forces acting on the block. There's only three of them here. We've got gravity, mg, that's pulling straight down. Then there's the normal force, n, from the ramp pushing on the block. And by definition, that's pointing perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. And finally, there's a friction force that's pointing back up the ramp, trying to slow down the block as it slides down. So there we go. We've already finished step one. Step two is to add up these forces and write F equals ma. Now, remember here that F equals ma is a vector equation, which means that it's secretly two equations packed into one. In other words, both the force F and the acceleration A have X components and Y components, and each one gets its own equation. The force in the X direction equals the mass times the X component of the acceleration, and likewise, the force in the Y direction equals M times the acceleration in the Y direction. Actually, we can break up these vectors into whatever components that we like. And in this case, since the block is moving along the surface of the ramp, instead of using horizontal and vertical coordinates, it makes more sense to use coordinates that run parallel and perpendicular to the ramp. So let's define a coordinate Q that measures the position of the block along the ramp, measured from the top. Then our goal is to figure out Q as a function of T because once we know that, we can answer whatever questions we want. So what are the forces in the Q direction? Well, we've got friction pointing back up the ramp. As for the normal force, that's pointing perpendicular to the ramp, so it doesn't contribute anything at all in the parallel direction. But lastly, what about gravity, which is pulling straight down? Well, just like we can break up any vector into its X and Y components, we can likewise break the gravity vector up into its parallel and perpendicular components with respect to the ramp. So we've got a little right triangle here, with gravity in red along the hypotenuse, the perpendicular component in green along one leg, and the parallel component in light blue along the other leg. Note first of all that the gravity arrow has to make an angle of 90 degrees minus theta with respect to the ramp, because we have this little right triangle in purple with theta in the bottom right corner and pi over two minus theta in the top corner. Meanwhile, since the green line makes a 90 degree angle with the ramp, that means it makes an angle theta with respect to the vertical. So if we look back at our free body diagram, what we've learned is that the perpendicular component of gravity in green makes an angle theta with the vertical. And now that we know that angle, we can figure out the lengths of the green and blue sides of the triangle. We've got mg sine of theta along the parallel direction. And in the perpendicular direction, we've got mg times cosine of theta. So the forces that point along the direction of the ramp are the parallel component of gravity, mg sine of theta, and the friction force. Then the F equals ma equation for Q can be written mg sine of theta minus friction, which I'll write as f sub f, equals m times a, the acceleration of q. In the perpendicular direction, we have the normal force n 
and the perpendicular component of gravity, mg cosine of theta. So f equals ma in that direction says that n minus mg cosine of theta equals zero. It's set to zero because the block is stuck moving along the surface of the ramp. It can't fly off or fall through. If you're starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed by all of these equations, I do not blame you. That's why I wrote up some notes to go along with the video, which you can get for free on my website. I'll put that link down in the description, so feel free to go check them out after you've watched if you want to see all of these arguments collected in one place for future reference. By the way, it's really easy to get the parallel and perpendicular components of gravity, mg sine of theta and mg cosine of theta, mixed up here. But a simple way to get them straight is just to think about what happens when theta equals zero. In that case, the ramp is just a flat table, and so gravity, which of course is pointing straight down, is already entirely perpendicular to the surface. So in this case, the parallel component is automatically zero. And that simple special case tells us that the parallel component has got to be mg sine of theta, not cosine, because it's sine of zero that correctly vanishes when you plug in theta equals zero. So back to our f equals ma equations. The perpendicular equation is just telling us what the normal force has got to be in order to keep the block from falling through the table. It's n equals mg cosine of theta. It's the parallel equation that's really more interesting here. To unpack it though, we need to know what this friction force is. Now, anytime you're dealing with friction forces, the first thing you want to ask yourself is whether you're talking about a static friction force or a kinetic friction force. Friction is static when two objects are pushed up against each other, but not sliding. If the block were just sitting at rest on the ramp, for example, then we'd have a static friction force. Kinetic friction comes in when two objects are sliding against each other. And since we're assuming here that the block starts to slide as soon as you set it down on the ramp, we are dealing with kinetic friction. Now, the actual microscopic details of the kinetic friction force are going to be very complicated. It's due to all the little atoms in the ramp bumping up against all the little atoms in the block. But when we zoom out and look at the macroscopic picture, we don't have to worry about all those details. Experimentally, we find that for common materials, the kinetic friction force is proportional to the normal force between the two objects. In other words, the magnitude of the friction force is some constant that we call mu sub k times the magnitude of the normal force. Mu here is called the coefficient of kinetic friction. It's something you measure experimentally in a lab and it characterizes the strength of kinetic friction between two materials, in this case, between our block and our ramp. The fact that the friction force is proportional to the normal force means that the harder two surfaces are pressed up against each other, the more friction there's gonna be, which certainly makes sense. In this case, our normal force is mg times cosine of theta, and so the friction force is gonna be mu sub k times that. So now we can plug that into our parallel equation and see what we get. If we put in f equals mu times mg cosine of theta, we can then cross out these common factors of m and solve for the acceleration a. It's g times the sine of theta minus mu times cosine of theta. So there's the acceleration of the block. Now let's pause to do some checks. First of all, the units look good here because g, of course, has units of acceleration, while theta and mu are dimensionless. So on both sides, we get units of meters per second squared, which is what we wanted. Another good check is to look at what happens when theta equals pi over two. In that case, the ramp becomes a vertical wall, and so our block is just in free fall. And in that case, since sine of pi over two equals one, and cosine of pi over two equals zero, we find that the acceleration is just g, which makes sense because our block is just like any other falling object. Now, since the acceleration here came out to be a constant, it's pretty easy to write down the trajectory q of t. Similar to what you learned for projectile motion, it's 1 half times a t squared plus the initial velocity times time plus the initial position. 
Now in this case, we release the block from rest from the top of the ramp at t equals zero. So v0 and q0 are both equal to zero. And our trajectory is simply one half times g sine of theta minus mu cosine of theta times t squared. So there's the solution to f equals ma. And now that we have the trajectory, we can answer whatever questions we want about the motion of the block. In particular, if we want to know the time it takes to hit the ground, we just need to set q equal to the length l of the ramp and then solve for the time t. We get t equals 2 times l divided by a, and then we take the square root. So that's how long it'll take for the block to reach the ground. Now, the only way to really understand these ideas is to practice solving problems for yourself. So I've written up a problem sheet to go along with this video, which I'll link down in the description below. In this first problem, for example, you'll analyze the case of King Sisyphus, who's forced to push a rock up a hill every single day for all eternity as part of his punishment for defying Zeus, the king of the Olympians. So go give those problems a try, and I've also written up solutions which are available on my website. All those links will be down in the description. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know down in the comments about any topics you might like to see me cover in the future. Thanks for watching, everybody.